This is the most exciting part about these 12 NBA teams. While Toronto was without Scotty Barnes, Emmanuel Quickly, and their injured 19th overall pick from Indiana, who they got for Pascal Siakam, Jacoby Walter, the man the Raptors acquired next to Quickly in the Ananobi trade, RJ Barrett, dropped a game-high 17 points in just 14 minutes of action helping fuel the rebuilding yet looking powerful wraps to a 27-point blowout victory over the Washington Wizards, 45th overall pick Jamal Shedd acquired in the trade for Davion Mitchell, where President Masai Ujiri only had to give up Jalen McDaniels to receive both those assets, was maybe the biggest bright spot in Toronto's preseason opener. In Jamal's first shift in Raptor threads, he buckled down to snatch two steals, as well as eat both a moving screen and a push-off, all in just four minutes. People are saying Shedd could be the Raptors' next Kyle Lowry, but all around the Raptors should be excited about the fact that Masai Ujiri still has it as an executive. Ujiri's still one of the best team presidents in basketball, as the Raptors' rebuild is in good hands as long as he's with the franchise. With the pickups of Buddy Heald, DeAnthony Melton, Kyle Anderson, the second round draft pick of Quentin Post, the development of Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, Trace Jackson Davis, and Brandon Pajemski, Stephen Curry evidently still being one of the best players on the planet after proving NBA players are world champions at the Olympics, the dubs could be a lot better in 2024-25. Against his former team in a 10-point win over the Kings, Buddy Heald posted a game-high 22 points on 8-for-9 shooting from the field and 6-for-7 shooting from Deep. Adding Alex Caruso via the trade market and Isaiah Hartenstein via free agency after already being the number one seed makes what elite executive Sam Presti did this past offseason something to talk about. In addition to that, the internal development OKC expects to see from Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren makes them a force to be reckoned with without a doubt. Hartenstein's exhibition debut for the Thunder saw him stuff the stat sheet with four points, eight rebounds, seven assists, plus both a steal and a block, while being a plus 20 in only 17 minutes minutes. Insane production in a limited minute stretch, displaying how well-rounded of a center Hartenstein can be. Amidst 2024's first overall pick, Zachary Risache dropping 18 points on 7 for 9 shooting from the field in the Atlanta Hawks preseason opener, he made this ridiculous mid-air between the legs no-look drop-off pass to Clint Capella for the and one. Not only did Risache display his skill working off the dribble in the open court, but he showed off his willingness and force to also act as the roller by getting loose to the basket and throwing down a couple jams, one of which was a poster. The versatile rookie was a game-high plus 15 on the night, even knocking down three of the four triples he attempted. Atlanta should be excited about this 19-year-old Spaniard with French nationality who already spent three years in pro leagues overseas before entering the association. Last year's 12th overall pick for the Dallas Mavericks, Derek Lively II, was known for his ability to block shots, set screens, and throw down posters from the dunker spot in his rookie campaign. While he's still getting it done like a big man, which includes an improved post game, with his new ability to take it coast to coast off the dribble like he does on this play, where he sheds Brandon Clark with a double hezzy, double momentum hezzy spin combo before drawing the and one and getting hyped, there's hope that Lively could progress into much more than just a role player. This year's fourth overall pick for the San Antonio Spurs, Stephon Castle, is coming off winning an NCAA championship for the Yukon Huskies as a freshman and flashed Rookie of the Year potential against the OKC Thunder. Just watch how he attacks Alex Caruso to his left hand while splitting Hartenstein before embracing the contact of AJ Mitchell for the tough finish. In addition to showing off solid playmaking chops, Castle also got loose in semi-transition to throw down this ridiculous one-handed poster over Alex Dukas. He did have six turnovers and finished with five points, three dimes, two boards, and as a plus six in 19 minutes, but in Castle's second preseason game against the Magic, he was much more productive statistically, as the Big East Freshman of the Year posted 17 points and four dimes to just one turnover. Phoenix Suns fans were blamed for making former head coach Frank Vogel the scapegoat, but with new head coach and 2021 champion for the Milwaukee Bucks' Mike Budenholzer, their offense looks night and day better, as portrayed by their ball movement on this play. The Suns not only showed off improvement in the half court, but even ran a full-on three-man weave in transition. John ja Morant getting hurt in his return was a bummer, but the Memphis Grizzlies' ninth overall pick, Zach Eady, dropped six points, seven rebounds, plus a block and a steal in his preseason opener against the Dallas Mavericks. After setting one of two cross screens to open up the Grizzlies' number one option, the 7'5", 300-pounder in ED, connecting with John ja Morant for a lob finish, flashed what'll be an enticing combination for many years to come. The four-year product of Purdue from Toronto also established position for a nice post-hook over fellow rookie Jamarian Sharp and caught another lob, this time from Luke Kennard. 
This year's 15th overall pick for the Miami Heat, Khalil Ware, is a 7-foot, 230-pound product of both Indiana University and the University of Oregon, who absolutely feasted in the Miami Heat's first preseason game against the Charlotte Hornets. Displaying to be a ferocious impact player on both ends of the court, Ware posted 13 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, and 4 blocks, and also showed you his versatility by draining a shot from deep range. With Khalil's positioning, mobility, and length, Bam Adebayo seemed to have found his backup, that is if Spolstra gives Ware that backup 5 spot over Thomas Bryant. Los Angeles Laker fans should be excited about J.J. Redick being their head coach because, through his podcast, he's proven to be one of the most intelligent basketball minds of this era. This intelligence has already started to translate from the podcast room to his post-game and post-practice interviews with the media. As take a listen to these two answers given by J.J., the man seeming to be a natural. We have, a, we have a limbo rate, so limbo is you're not crashing and you're not getting back. And we were the worst team in the league last year at a limbo rate. Um, we want, I mean, for me, I, in an ideal world, everybody crashes. We deal with the consequences of that. So we've got to sort of emphasize that and emphasize staying out of limbo. Um, I believe that was inception. We all know what happens when you get stuck in limbo. Uh, Milwaukee's a long way. <laughs> first quarter, very crisp. We used an eight-man rotation. Seemed like you were getting a lot of good shots. So what did you like in that first look at the starting five and the three bench players? Well, we really emphasized screening in our pregame meeting. I thought we did a good job of screening. They're not switching a lot, and they're sending our side pick and rolls to the middle, and we did a good job of screening and making plays out of that. And, and really, the only thing for me was just our transition defense there in the second quarter. It wasn't great. we got to clean that up. The Minnesota Timberwolves' eighth overall pick, Rob Dillingham, is a natural bucket getter with handles on a string. From his pull-up jumper to his float game to generally his recognition of how much space he has to operate with, this man's pure shot creation is smooth as hell and incredible to watch. Dillingham dropped 21 points and 4 dimes off the T-Wolves bench against the Lakers and has a chance to ultimately develop into a starting point guard next to Anthony Edwards that gives Minnesota one of the most dynamic inside-out backcourts across the association. The 6'2", 170-pound guard out of Kentucky shot a blistering 44.4% from deep range for the Wildcats in his lone freshman campaign, and I'm really looking forward to watching Rob develop into the player he ultimately becomes. Carl Anthony Towns lit it up in his second preseason game for the New York Knicks, going off for a game-high 25 points against the Wizards. Proven he's fitting in well with his new squad, Cat combined with the rest of the Knicks starting five in Brunson, Hart, Ananobi, and Bridges to be a plus 110. The former Minnesota Timberwolf was also a monster on the boards, posting a game-high 12 rebounds while also compiling a steal and two blocks. Towns started to form a nice two-man game with Jalen Brunson as the two connected in the pick and roll slash pop multiple times. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.